Right, it's time to get into Word today, and uh, once again, I'd like to introduce my partner, Monday through Fridays on 95.5 The Fish, but not only is she a fantastic on-air, um, encouraging thousands and thousands of people for the last couple of years on-air, she's been preaching God's Word, she's been a woman of God, she's been in uh, mentoring and, and training young women leaders for for a, for a while now, oh, not a long, long time, because that makes you older yeah, than yeah. than <laughs> you you actually are. Yeah. And you and I are only a couple weeks yeah. apart, so I don't want to tell you that you, you're old because if I say that, and then I'm just old. not that I'm old. <laughs> All right, enough. Please, New Hope Voyager family, please give a warm, warm Voyager welcome to my sister, Pastor Tisha Lefelt. Oh my goodness, I love you, Sam. I love you. You guys you. are awesome. Oh my. How's that worship? Yeah. Woo! Woo! You go hana ho over and over again. Good to have you in the house this morning, guys and ladies. Good to have you here. And thank you so much for allowing me to come back to your ohana. I, I met a new friend today, Duke and his wife, Marie. And Haley and Renee, as Duke was walking in, he goes, I listen to you every morning. He goes, I'm a Lelihua grad as well. So we both went, mules! What am I? And, and then, <laughs> what's really fun is that he, you know, found out what year, and I says, oh, I graduated in 85. He goes, oh, 85, that's when the Lelihua mules crushed the Crusaders. Oh, yeah. no! That was the year they crushed them, right? Like, and, I, and he knew, I have to take this off so I can... Thank you for this beautiful leg. Um, and he goes, that was a year. And he even said 10 to 0. Whatever. Then who of the mules just crushed those crusaders. <laughs> Any crusaders in the house today? <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Crusaders, but mules rock. Come Yay! on. Come on, mules. Uh, uh, oh, come uh, on. Uh, uh, so blessed. To <laughs> so blessed to have you here uh, uh, this morning. And we are going to go into uh, a message we're calling Your Mama's Prayers. Yes. Anybody want to turn to Mama and say, Your Mama's Prayers? Your Mama's Prayers. Come on. Turn to somebody and say that. Now, uh, I love that because it, it's a little swag. And, uh, you know, if you go to the next one, Penny, thank you so much for doing the keynote this morning. Uh, on here, I just want to read this. If a woman speaks and no one li is listening, her name is probably Mom. <laughs> Isn't that so sad? Oh, jeez. I love this one here. Go to the next one here. It says, Mom, I love you. Age 10, I love you, Mom, so much. 14, Mom is so annoying. <laughs> Age 18, I want to leave this house. At 25, the child says, Mom, you're so right. 30, Mom, will you forgive me? Anybody in the house know this? Yes. At age 50, I don't want to lose my mom. Mm. Oh, I'm, I'm like two years away from 50, so I totally understand. My mom is 72, and get this, her mom is still alive. Yeah. 95 years old. So get, get this. I'm twins, brother. We seriously are. We got some hot moms in the house. Yeah. Woo -hoo. And then our, our grandmothers are still alive. So I think well, I'm just going to go on and on and on. Amen. I don't that. Thank you, Jesus, for my grandmother. But at, at the age of 70, it goes back and it says, Mom, I love you so much. And Aww. that's exactly where my mom is, is at as well. We go for walks all the time. And she always says, let's go to the next one, Penny. And I know all the kids in the, in the house <laughs> will probably wonder, well, who's the real hero? It's not Iron Man today, okay? It's super mom. It's the mom yeah. that's holding the baby. Woo! with the food on the stove and the clothes behind her wearing the briefcase and the kid and all that super moms in the house i like this last one and this is for my brother sam the little boy sitting up on the stool see i told you the little girl's going so that's how she does it <laughs> moms you are really super moms and so blessed to have you now i am hispanic all the hispanic people woo, woo. come on let's do it Hola, chicas. Okay, so do we have the stereo? Go ahead and put the stereo on here. Now, this is quintessential moms, Hispanic moms. I don't know if you can hear the lights now. Mira, la comida está hecha. There were subtitles to that. And, um, Let me apologize. I downloaded the wrong video for her. It was supposed to have subtitles on it. It's my fault. No, it's but, okay. But you guys caught You guys caught idea, right? Okay, okay good, 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 good. 
Um, but my mom, seriously, anything, that every, I go, oh, my sore, I have a sore throat. She goes, put your Vicks on. <laughs> so everything is Vicks, and I, when I saw the video, I went, oh, my gosh. I thought my, it was only my mom. And if we, I'm running around without socks. My mom is always like, put your socks on, you're going to get sicker. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know, is that all moms? Yes. Is it? I use Vicks at home. You use Vicks at home and socks. Okay, good. It's not just Hispanic moms. Oh, for the Hawaiians, too. Here we go. Um, we're going to go into, uh, you know, your mama's prayers. And I cannot thank the Lord enough for my mom. She raised us single parents. Uh, she was a single parent. Uh, she, she worked hard at night, and we were latchkey kids, so more so she had to pray. And it was to the point where I remember she would, um, you know, we, we would, because we were latchkey kids, we would be indoors, and, you know, we didn't have, we were kind of, you know, not that rich, so the only trampoline that we had was our bed. And so, I mean, you know, no kids, I mean, you guys don't jump on your beds, okay? But my brother and I, we used the bed as a trampoline. So my mom would come home and goes, I see, I know you guys are jumping on the bed. And uh, I go, Mom, how do you know we're jumping on the bed? Well, it's like the bed's messy, and then A, the, the, you know where the bottom of the feet, they're moved? So you can see where the hard part of it is. So she tells us, you know, you know, yeah, you guys are jumping out of bed. It must be this. So my mom goes to work, and my brother and I were bored in the house, so we have to go visit the trampoline again. But this time, we're going to make sure that it's done, you know, fixed and all that, right? So we jump on the bed. We go and fix it. We put the feet on the right place. We do everything. We look at it. Go to the side. Okay, it's all done. My mom comes home and goes, "You kids, you rotten kids, are jumping on the bed again," and we're like. How does she know? <laughs> well, later on, as we got older, my mom, I go, Mom, you know, we're like 21 or something. How did you know that we were jumping on the bed? Well, back in the day in the 70s, they had the square mirror, mirrors that went from like bottom all the way to the top at 100 mirrors, the whole wall, you know? Remember that? The whole wall was filled with mirrors. mirrors yeah. Well, there was baby handprints way at the top of the squares. So all the squares were clean. We even did that. We were like, ah, cleaning. We didn't know way at the top. There's all the fingerprints. We're like, ah. You know, so my mom more so had to be praying for us. Uh, then I, I also remember, uh, you know, uh, does anybody remember Charlie's Angels? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So my mom would work at night, and Charlie's Angels is on on Wednesday nights. My mom would go, you guys got to be in bed at 8 o'clock. And I'm like, but Charlie's Angel starts at 8. I don't care. You're in bed at 8. So it's me and Brad. My mom's never going to know that we're going to be in bed. Okay, we're going to go and, and turn on the TV. And we go and turn on the TV. Every time we would see a light, we would, you know, turn off the TV. It's not mom. Go back over there. Turn back on. <laughs> see a light. It's not mom. It's mom. The next time, turn off. Run into the, into the uh, bedroom. Jump on the, the, the uh, trampoline, I was going to say. The, the bunk beds. <laughs> Jump on the bunk beds and go to sleep. And my mom would walk in. I'd hear the keys drop. I'd hear the bag drop. And then she would walk. And about like a couple minutes, she'd come into the, into the bedroom. And she'd go, you rotten kid. I told you to go to sleep at 8 o'clock at night. And it's like, you know, what, 8.45. I'm not, and we'd go, Mom, what are you doing? You just got home. We just woke up. And, you know, trying to pretend. Find out later, 20 years old, I remember going to my mom and go, Mom, how did you know that we were, like, totally watching Charlie's Angels and Starsky Hutch. She said that she would drop the keys, drop the bag. Anybody know what she did? She walked all the super moms. They all know. She went right to the back of the TV. She put her hand back there. And that bad boy was hot. So she knew we were lying. And so she caught us, you know. Uh, but my mom was so gracious, so gracious and so kind. And I think about that. You know, his word says in Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6 and in Deuteronomy. It says that we're to honor moms and dads. Yeah. And it says that, that our life may go well. And, and if you think about Mother's Day, that's the day we honor moms. There's another day too. Anybody know? Their birthday. Yeah. That's another day that you know that we get the lay and we get them the balloon and, and we open up the door and we treat them to their, their favorite place and their favorite movie and all that good stuff. Two days out of the whole year when God is saying, I want you to honor your mom. I want you to honor your dad. Today's Mom's Day, so we're going to focus on Mom. Two days. What are we going to do with the rest of 363 days? What do we do? Still honor them. we got to honor them. Amen. 
Amen. And I'll tell you why. God wants to come in and ambush. He wants to come in and, and just, just smash mom with love through you. And then just as Sam was saying, gosh, we're to get and then we're to give. And God will be that one that's going to get. We want to see that happen to her, for our moms. Uh, well, I want to go to the next one. Now, there's your mama's prayers. And what do we got up here? There's a thing called gut prayers. Everybody say gut prayers. Gut prayers. Gut prayers to me are is prayers that are prayed from the gut. And moms, there's a few people, pastors, friends, a spouse, a dad, and moms. Moms will pray gut prayers prayers. We're talking about a prayer that comes from the inside out. Every emotion. I mean, you don't even have to tell them that much. They're already praying from the inside out for you. Amen. That is a gut prayer. And moms hold that. Moms, you know, it, it's, it's something I don't know how they do. It's just like they, 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 they have these emotions. They feel. And, and I think where we have to be really careful is that we're praying from faith and not from fear. Because moms sometimes, and including myself, I'll just come before God, and all of a sudden I'm praying from fear. And God wants us to be in a, per, a place that we're play, praying from fear, trusting Him that He's got that person that you're praying for. So, gut prayers. I love this in 1 Samuel 1.10. You can go to the next one. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. That is a gut prayer. And get this. Hannah wasn't even a mom yet. She was already, she was prophesying over herself. She was like going, she's already praying. Do you know what Hannah's son's name was? Samuel. So here, I know, that's just for you, brother. I did it just for you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so she's praying, and she's going, God. And it reminds me of my mom. My mom will say this often, is that my arms ached for you before you were even here. She was like 18, 19, 20. I, was, I think you're 23, 24 years old when you had me for the first time. For the first time. Because <laughs> <laughs> the second time, the third time. It's much easier. <laughs> yeah, and so for four years, her arms are aching. And she's, my mom's already praying a gut prayer just like Hannah. Hannah's praying a gut prayer. She's like, God, please. I mean, if you read on the grief that she held to just to have her son Samuel, even to the point where she said, God, if you give me a son, if you give me a child, I'll give him back to your sanctuary. The pastor ended up raising Samuel. And, and so he gut prayers. Moms know how to do that good. Now, here are a few prayers from the gut. We know. I'm just going to throw out Jesus. Anybody know? Jesus prayed from the gut. John 17, you want to read some gut prayers? Read John 17. You want to read a gut prayer? Go to the garden. Yes. Go to the garden. You want to see him praying over, for, over the land that didn't have a shepherd? He cried. He said, God, these people don't have a shepherd. He prayed from the gut. Moms will pray from that spot. Amen. And then the best is where he prayed from the cross, he prayed a gut prayer. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Who can do that when we're offended and hurt? Amen. Father, I, I forgive them for they know not what they do. I, I'll release them. God, you paid, you paid the price on that cross for me, but guess what, God? I'm going to allow that, that blood to be poured out on my offender. I'm going to allow it to pay. Because sometimes I'm looking for the payment, and I'm sitting here, and I'm in prison, and I'm angry, and I'm holding unforgiveness. Well, Jesus prayed from the gut, from the cross, on the cross. God, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's a gut prayer. And I love this. Esther dies. Uh, no, she doesn't die. Sorry, she, she's dead now. But she, her mom and her dad, her mom and her dad passes away. <laughs> her mom and her dad passes away. She's adopted by her cousin, Mordecai. But let's just think, because they were Jewish. Her God was Jehovah Jireh. That was their God. Let's just for a moment, before, and I'm, I'm supposing this, I'm kind of, Guessing, I, I, there's no scripture on this, but I'm just guessing. Let's suppose Esther's mom prayed from the gut these prayers. God, I pray that you'd use her mightily. God, I ask you that you would give her favor with man and favor with you. And God, I pray. Can, man, can you imagine Esther's mom praying from the gut? God, 
would you, would you save many people's lives through my daughter? Ooh. Would you save many people's lives? Oh, can you just imagine? And how about, does anybody know uh, Jaka, Jacobet? Anybody know Jacobet? Who, whose mom was Jacobet? Okay, let me, let me just throw out some gut prayers that maybe she prayed, and maybe you'll guess. God, I release him into your hands. May he be found in a place where he can grow up and be wise. Oh, come on. Who just said that? Kaale. Okay. Here's another gut prayer that maybe Jacobet prayed. He, she prayed, uh, oh God, I pray that he would be a man that is God-reliant and that he is not self-reliant. He's not relying on himself, but he's relying on you. One more gut prayer that he should possibly pray, just in case you still don't know. Father, I pray that at his feet, the waters would divide. Oh, oh, oh. What did I hear, Andrea? What did you say? Moses? Oh, I thought you said Moses. Oh, you said Moses, huh, girlfriend? It was Moses. Imagine a mom praying that gut prayer. Moms, now I love my, my former pastor, whom I love so much with all my heart from Hope Chapel. I'm a four square baby as well. I'm just not a crusader baby. I'm a most <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ralph Moore would often say that God initiates prayers. God initiates prayers. And moms, as you're pressing into God, as you're leaning into God, as you're wanting to do a relationship with God, God is initiating prayers in you to pray for that son, that daughter, Amen. and the rest of the ohana around you. Yes. The rest of them. Now, Eve, now some of you are here going, oh my gosh, my mom, she doesn't pray for me. She doesn't know Jesus. She only knows Buddha. What do I do now? Eve didn't even have a mom. My mom didn't have a mom that prayed for her either. I mean, didn't even show her the love that she, she deserved to have. Didn't, didn't, now check this out, hurting people hurt others. Amen. So we know my grandma was hurting, so she was hurting others. We're not, we, we at least her, given her, but Eve didn't even have a mom. So we can take, those of you who don't have a mom who's praying from the gut for you, you can know this, Hebrews 7.25 says that Jesus, he prays from the gut for you. Amen. He intercedes on your behalf yes. day and night. Jesus! Amen. How cool is that? Amen. So even if your mamacita Conchita is not praying from the gut, <laughs> you know that Jesus is. Amen. You can take that and know what better, what better person. And I love also, I love, don't go to the next one yet. Uh, the ne the, I love also in, in, in Proverbs 31, a lot of ladies just went, mm, they love that. Because it, it allows you to scan your soul. Kind of find out and see where you're at. But does anybody know who, who maybe spoke those words out? Anybody know? Who, who were the one? I mean, I don't know who transcribed it on, on the scroll, but I mean, who, who was the person who breathed it out, or God breathed it out through that person? It was Lemuel. Lemuel, check this out. It was his mama. Yeah. It was Lemuel's mama. That's who said this. This is what she says. The saying of the king, Lemuel, it says, um, an inspired utterance. His mother taught him. And this is what she says. Listen, my son. Listen. Son of my womb. Listen, my son. The answer to my prayers. And she ends up uttering Proverbs 31. Seek a woman who's seeking God. Seek a woman that's not seeking the bars and drink and alcohol. Seek a woman who's doing this because this is what you will profit. And it goes on and says, you know, beauty is fleeting and, and, and charming is, what does it say? Char charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. A mama Amen. is saying this. This, this is her gut prayer that, that her son would, would heed these words. My mom prayed from, just, yes, keep it right there. My mom prayed, because uh, there's a scripture back there, and I want to I wanna surprise you with it, that's why. <laughs> okay, my, my mom prayed from the gut. She came to me one day. I'm, I'm 18 years old, and I didn't get married until I was 36, and I literally thought I was going to be 80 
with one tooth and a cane on a rocking chair and never had sex. With a dog. I'd be like, I know it! With a dog. I'd be like, I just could picture myself, you know, 80 years old, and I was like, I never got to get married. And my tooth is about to fall out, and that's it, you know? I have one tooth and a dog. Seriously! I am 18 to 36, by 30 years old, my mom comes to me and says to me, her gut prayer, I'm going to be fasting for your husband. I'm like, thank you, sweet Jesus, I need help. <laughs> she goes, I am going to stop drinking her number one thing that she loved to drink, a Coca-Cola. She yeah. loved those. Come to the movie, get the popcorn, and get the Coca-Cola. And I knew that was her best friend. And I was going, wow, Mom, are you sure you want to fast? You don't have to do that. She goes, no, I want to fast Cokes because I need you to get you married. I mean, she's a, she's, she is a, Hispa a Hispanic mama to the, to the bone. But literally, she was in a place where she was going, I want you to marry somebody who's God-fearing, to listen to God, leans into God, hangs with God, smiles because he knows who he is in God, and begin to just really press in to prayers for me. Well, literally, she, did, she had no idea, and I had no idea, what God was doing in that very moment. God was going to crush me, basically, in, in two ways. He was going to uh, crush this part of me that I found security in other things. I found security and I didn't even know. I'm 30 years old. I'm a pastor at a church. And I'm finding security in things rather than in God. And number two, I had three best friends that had no idea wrapped around me. And her prayers and God came in and began to smash me. And I'll tell you why. I always had a dream. You know, I was going to marry somebody who was uh, six foot, maybe six one. 230 pounds with a lot of, you know, I want somebody that was, um, how do you say, like, you know, just a little fat. I don't mind. I like big. And I'll tell you why, because if next to me, this big dude, I was going to look petite. <laughs> I was going to look so tiny, like one China dog. I knew that I knew that I was going to, I was going, I want somebody. And, and I, because I, you know, I, I always felt like I was big around people. I go around, I feel like Amazon. So only way, get somebody who's six foot, bigger than me, and I look so teeny next to them, yeah? And so, uh, this is what happened, and I don't know that it's all about me. It's all about me feeling okay, and I was worthy, just the way I was. So I meet Jason, my husband. And not only is he not six foot, but he's definitely not 200 pounds. Now, my eye sees about 110. Maybe, maybe 102. He always sees and goes, I was not that skinny. I go, yes, you were, son. You were like 102 pounds. So I, I meet my, my husband. Uh, and again, he's like 102 pounds. Uh, and I needed somebody, you know, and, and, and not only that, I mean, you know, I married him. He knows this. He is my white chocolate. The problem is, is that he was see-through white. And I, and I was like, going, okay, this is deaf. I can't walk with this person. And then in the year 2000, the brother was wearing one of those things called a mullet. And, you know, a short in the, the front and then the, in the back. And I know it was off. And then it went, did I even did it go worse? Where he was wearing the neon shorts that kind of go up like that, <laughs> and the shirt that says "I ran the triathlon in 1980" and the little hole. And I am, and I meet him. I think he's super cool, but there's no way I can walk next to him because I, I, at that time I remember going to the store and grabbing a, a Starbucks cup of coffee, and I felt like I was tantara. Way back in the day when Starbucks was all that, you know. It's like you're walking with it. I can't walk with a 7-Eleven cup. Uh, that's going to, like, decrease my worth. <laughs> I'll walk with a Starbucks cup. Ooh, yeah, look at me. I, I remember walking next to a person in church and thinking, wow, wait for me, because you're hot, you're handsome, and, and you walk next to me, and my, my, my value kind of increases because look who Tish is walking with. Right, and, and then I, I remember uh, Hope Chapel giving us, Mike High was on staff with me, and he got an office on one side, cubby holes in the middle, and I got an office, and we both had doors for the first time. He had a doorway at the end. I had a door at the way at the end. I shut my door. I sat down. I put my feet up on the table, and I'm like, <laughs> look at my office. It was like 10 by 10, but I had an office with a door. I was so excited. I couldn't believe it. It lasted five days. They came in, oh, we're going to get rid of the offices. You guys need to be in cubby holes, too. I mean, I thought I was all, I mean, God was giving me, I, I found my worth in square footage. 
I found my worth in this, in this ruler-sized room. I allowed the door and that room to give me worth. And all of a sudden, here, I don't know this. I meet this person, and I can't even walk because my eyes are on the outside and what he's going to make me. I already, I'm already of lack because I don't know my worth in God. And I'm going to be with this person that's sporting the mullet in the year 2000? It's, it's not going to go down. So I, I mean, God, 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 my mom's praying gut prayers. Lord, you know, bring that certain person. God's bringing this amazing certain person, but my eyes are all on the outside. Number, th- number, the other side that God, remember I told you there's two parts? When I was younger, my mom had a boyfriend, and he was cruel towards her and cruel towards my brother and towards me. And at six years old, I remember, I remember this. I will never, ever, ever, ever marry a white man. Ever. So here I am, 30, meet Jason with a mullet. He's like see-through white. And that six-year-old, that six-year-old girl is like going, I mean, I remember going to Long's and getting the orange spray. And I'm like, would you like to use some of this, Ted? <laughs> but I, I remember that six-year-old girl comes back and says, do you remember? We made a vow. We made a vow. We're not going to marry a white man, remember? And then I go hang with him, and I'm like drenched with God's presence. I mean, I am going, wow, who are you? And where, where, do, you, where do you live? Like daily. It's like he lives in God's presence, and I'm like, I do too, but you're like drinking in some other well. And, and so I was, I, I, remember my, I remember thinking to myself, okay, if I just close my eyes, I love him. But then I open my eyes, and there's the mullet, the neon short, 102 pounds, and I'm like bone sticking out, and I look huge, and I'm like, I guess I could pick him up, you know, and even though I want to be the one picked up, I'm like, oh, I guess that'll work, you know. So God, I take a class, and in there, my mom's still praying these gut prayers. I take a class, and it's called Healing Hearts with my church that I go to now. And in that, began to really just show me uh, my best friends. My best friends were hate and anger and bitterness. I didn't even know. They were this wall that I built up that I was going to protect myself, not allow God to protect me. Because guess what? Hate? Anger and bitterness is protecting me well enough. I didn't even know. I, I leave there. I repent. I ask the Lord to forgive me. My eyes are c- kind of open. I go into my ha- in my little cottage. I'm in there, and it's, it's quiet. I just leave. And I'm walking around, and I fall to my knees, and my head hits the ground, and I begin to sob. And what I began to say is, God, who hurt him? Who hurt him so bad that he hurt my mom, my brother, and me? I begin to weep for him. I begin to weep with a compassion and mercy that I could not conjure on my own. Only God could conjure it. Only God can conjure it because my mom was praying God prayers for me. She was praying, God, lead her to that person that you have set apart for her. I love the scripture. 1 Samuel 16, 7, the Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, the Lord. Everybody say that together. Looks at what? The heart. The heart. The Lord looks at the heart. And I got to tell you, the next one, please. And I love this here. Moms have the power to pray God's ideas in. God's ideas in. The enemy wants to come in yeah. and sever and break that which he desired. I was raised a Jehovah Witness. I knew religion, but God was wanting me to be a woman of relationship. I stuttered when I was a kid, and I still stutter sometimes, but it's okay. But look what God's doing. I, I, you know, the enemy comes in and goes, I want to sever and break this relationship that I have for you, God says. God comes in. It says, I want to pray my ideas in. I want to initiate these prayers. Will you allow me to initiate you to pray, to be aligned to him? I'm going to bring my husband up. Everybody put your hands together for my husband. Hot, hot, hot chocolate. Jay Bird in the house. Can we put a mic on for my, my husband? But would you bow your heads? 
and your hearts. We want to pray for the moms. Father, I thank you for the word this morning. And we'd ask you, God, uh, your word, it says the tongue has the power to give life. And I'd ask you that you would bring oodles and oodles of life in every mom this morning. And God, every other person that's not a mom that's here, God, I ask you that you would do the same. I bless you. Uh, my husband is going to lead you moms. And maybe I'll ask you to do this. Just, just in your comfort of your own chair right now, moms, we want to pray with you. In the comfort of your own chair. I want you to take a moment, take a deep breath, and let it out. I want you to come face to face, heart to heart, with the God who created you, the God who loves you, and the God who wants to use you mightily today and tomorrow. There's probably some moms in here this morning who, if we get really honest, you, you do have some hurts and maybe some anger toward those that you also deeply love in your children. And if that's you, we know the promise of 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of the unrighteousness. And I just, just hitchhike upon my words this morning. I encourage you to maybe say it out loud. And if there's others who you, you you can see anger in your life, you can jump in on this too. Yeah, why don't we all do it together? Out loud enough, out loud enough for you to hear. But you, I want your tongue to be activated this morning. Yes, Lord. It says the words bring life and death in Proverbs. And, and just say these words with me and say, Dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. For holding on to anger. For holding on to anger. Bitterness. <laughs> bitterness. And even possibly hatred. Possibly hatred, God. For those that have hurt me. For those who hurt me. Said things against me. Said things against me. Father, today I receive your forgiveness. Father, today I receive your forgiveness. And Jesus, the forgiver, Jesus, the forgiver, I invite you into that place in my heart. I invite you to that place in my heart where I've held unforgiveness. Where I've held unforgiveness. Lord, that I release your perfect forgiveness. Lord, I release your perfect forgiveness to these people, especially my children. Especially my children who have said things and did things that hurt me. Father, forgive me for believing the lie that my prayers don't matter, that they've been ineffective. Father, I declare that my words, empowered by your Spirit, Powered by your spirit, will bring life to the lives of my children. Father, forgive me for losing confidence. Father, forgive me for losing confidence. Because I see things that aren't going well right now. Father, I believe these words that I pray words that I pray will come to pass. Will come to pass. Your word will not return void. Your word will not return void. That I will maintain hope. I will maintain hope. I will maintain faith. I will maintain faith. And I will keep my love on. Yes, Lord. To those you have given me a privilege to raise and to love. Father, I receive today your perfect love to empower me to carry on, to love and to pray, and to see your will be done in the lives of my children.
Thank you, Lord. Pray blessings on you today. Thank you so much for being my friend. Thank you for being a friend of Jesus. And thank you for being here this morning. We love you. I love you too, Marie. Thank you for being here today. God bless you guys. Please help me one more time to give your thanks and your deep gratitude to my sister Tisha, her husband Jason. Love you guys so much. We're going to pray that one Sunday Jason will come back and preach the word to you too. Yeah. yeah. He's good. He's good. Yeah. I'm good, but he's good. He's good. <laughs> Did the Lord speak to our hearts this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. I know I know you guys have to run off, yeah? To uh, you, you need to throw down the word again this morning. You've got to go to her church and preach the word. So... Um, as you guys are walking out, can everybody help me extend a hand to Jason and Tisha right now? Lord Jesus, we just thank you for your servants of God right now. Lift her up, Father God, and Jason, God, as they continue to serve you today. Father, bless them with everything they need, God. And, and Father, cover them with your love and your mercy. Father, abundantly, Lord, uh, lavish what you have for them as they walk forward, Father, with the trust and faith. Thank you for them for being examples to us of what it means to dish out the love of God as they receive it. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you once again, you guys. Hey, let's all stand. We want to thank you for coming on this Mother's Day. And, uh, you know, if you're a mom, we want to bless you with some goodies today, so don't leave. Now, if you're a mom, don't forget to pick up some goodies on your way out. And I want to just say Happy Mother's Day once again to Mama Donna as she leaves too. Donna, God bless you, Mom. Love you. All right. Oh, man. That's some good ones. Good, good stuff. Hallelujah. As we leave this morning, be encouraged. That God is on your side. Hallelujah. And as we continue in the series of prayer, we're going to come back next week. And we're going to talk a little bit about how we are all intercessory prayer warriors and how important that is. And we serve the, the number one intercessory prayer warrior and his name is Jesus. Because he intercedes on our behalf every single day. Because he loves you and those who are with us are more than those against us. Let's sing. Those who are with us are more than those against us. Those who are with us are more than those against us. We rejoice. We rejoice. We rejoice. Greater is He who is in us. Greater is He who is in us than